Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar with the America-Israel Friendship League, the dog days of summer, um, Israel's Hebrew-speaking guide dogs. And I am personally very excited for this webinar. I myself am a dog lover. I grew up with a Vishla at home in Boston, and I know that we have many, many dog lovers um, joining us today from Israel and the United States and around the world. We already have people commenting in the Zoom chat and on Facebook Live. Um, wherever you're calling in from today, welcome, and please tell us what kind of dog you have, and if you don't have a dog, what your favorite dog is and what kind of dog you would get um, when you can get one. So my name is Naomi Reinhart. I'm the Chief Development Officer of the America-Israel Friendship League. I'm calling in today from New York. We have a wonderful panel today. Um, I see someone already posted Beagle. Um, we have a wonderful panel today from the United States and from Israel. I will introduce them in a second. Um, and we also want to give a special thanks to Connie Smuckler, who's a great friend of our organization, as well as the Israel Guide Dog Center for the Blind. Um, she's in Philadelphia. We thank her for making the shidduch, or the introduction between these two organizations. And we wish her well and her family well, who are watching from Philadelphia today. So let me first um, introduce our wonderful panel. We have Michael Leventhal, who's the executive director of the United States um, Organization of the Israel Guide Dog Center for the Blind. Um, Michael was elected to the position of executive director in July 2008 after he served as the volunteer treasurer and board member for more than 20 years of the organization. Um, it began as, as his dream um, and that dream recently turned into a reality through the incredible efforts of um, himself and his friend and a small group of dedicated volunteers that we will hear about shortly. Um, we also have with us Noah Brown, who's the CEO and co-founder um, based in Israel. And um, he started this organization um, using dogs for military purposes. And he's always loved animals. He grew up in a kibbutz and later worked for the nature reserve authorities. Um, and in his 20s, he started working with training dogs um, to help um, for greater purposes. Um, beyond just having them as wonderful pets in people's homes. And we'll hear how he um, met the other um, co-founders of the organization and how they um, created this organization um, several decades ago together. And lastly, we have um, Danny Layani, who's based in Israel, who's also on screen um, he, with his dog, Roly. Uh, I don't know if Roly can wave, but we'll, we'll hear from him shortly. And um, he was trained as a social worker and worked with the Disabled Veteran Services. Um, and um, we'll hear a little bit about how Danny was originally affected during the Lebanon War and how he was blinded, although his life was spared and how um, decades later um, he got involved with this organization and how this organization really um, transformed his life um, for many years. So um, let me turn it over to Mike Leventhal again in Philadelphia, who will speak a little bit about how this organization came to be and what his role is with the organization. And stay tuned for many wonderful photos and videos that we'll share of dogs um, throughout the coming hour as well. So Mike, let's turn it over to you. Thank you, Naomi. And we really do appreciate the invitation. Um, we are so thrilled to be here and be able to explain who we are and what we do we are a very unique organization, and all good nonprofits should have a good story. So I'd like to tell you the story of how we got started. Uh, back in the 80s, there was a young paratrooper named Noach Braun, and you've already seen Noach on the screen. Um, but Noach was a paratrooper. He trained dogs for the military, and he loved it. He loved working with the dogs. And he said, you know, someday when I get out of the Army, I want to work with dogs, but for a good purpose. And he decided that he wanted to train dogs for people with uh, visual impairments. When he got out of the army, he found that there was no guide dog school in, in his home country of Israel. At that time, if you were blind, you needed to go to Jerusalem and pass an English test. And if you spoke English well enough, get on a plane and come to America and get a dog. Now think about that. If you don't speak English, you're done. There's no, no chance for a dog for you. If you do speak English, leave your family for a month, come to a foreign country, get a dog that doesn't understand the, the traffic circles in Israel, that doesn't understand the intersections are built differently, 
doesn't understand aggressive drivers and cars that park on the sidewalk, uh, and especially doesn't understand your language. So you get an American dog that's trained in English, and you flew home, and there was nobody there to help you. So Noach decided at the age of 26 years old, he decided, I'm going to start a guide dog school. Now, that's the first miracle. You know, how many 26-year-olds do you know have a dream to help somebody else? So Noach, on his own, no help from the government, gets on a plane, flies to New York, and he thought that and when he landed at JFK, there would be a sign, welcome Noach, this way to train guide dogs. Uh, but of course, there was no sign. And Noach found New York to be a little inhospitable. And he worked at Moishe's Movers and he did odd jobs. And he, uh, while he was in New York, started to call all of the guide dog schools in America to ask them, will you train me to be a trainer? I want to learn the skill so I can go home and help my people. Every school turned him down. All, all schools said no. And he was heartbroken. I mean, all he wanted to do was learn the skill and go back and help Israelis with, uh, with blindness. And he just, he kept trying, he kept getting no responses. And finally, he went to the consulate in New York and he asked them, can you help me? Can you write a letter? Can you soften their hearts? I just want to help our people. And the consul said, no, you know, you're an individual, we're political, we really can't get involved. But the guy at the desk said, I know this man in Pennsylvania, let's give him a call. They call the guy up and the guy says, hey, the last thing I need is another project. I'm too busy, I can't do it. And the consul said, just meet the man. He's a mensch, he's not trying to get rich, he just wants to help people. So the guy says, you know what? Have him come to my home. It was the first night of Hanukkah in 1986. And we also think it's interesting that an organization for the blind was founded on the Festival of Light. Uh, Noah got on a bus. He went two hours to uh, the local town. The man picked him up and brought him to his home for dinner on the first night of Hanukkah. Well, that man was my father. And it was our family that met Noah on the first night of Hanukkah. And my father later said he had never met anyone more focused and, and was such a, a great dream. Now, we didn't know anybody who was blind. We didn't know anybody with a guide dog. But my father loved Israel. Um, he was passionate about helping others. And he just decided to help this kid. Uh, well, they called, my father started calling all of the guide dog schools and all of the schools said no to him as well. But finally, the school in Ohio says, look, it, if you stop calling, we'll take him. But you need to raise $100,000 to offset our costs. And that's how it all began. So uh, we had a family business and we uh, with a hotel and a restaurant and our desk clerks would stuff envelopes and do the mailings. And little by little, we grew and uh, we finally got them educated and trained. And it was 1991 and time to go back to Israel. And uh, we said to Noah, what now? He says, well, I'll start in the kibbutz and they'll give me a corner. And we said, no, let's, we've raised money this long. Let's raise a little bit more. And we bought him a house in Netanya and built kennels in the back of the house. And he lived in the home with his family and brought the, the blind people in one by one and trained them. Little by little, we grew. And now we're in a beautiful center in Beethoved, just south of Tel Aviv. Uh, we've trained almost 800 guide dogs to date. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing place. We invite you all to come. We'll talk about that again later. But I wanted to just tell you and share the story of how this nonprofit got started. It truly is a remarkable, grassroots organization. What we're gonna do now is show you a short film. It's only three minutes long, but because it's in Zoom, in the Zoom world, it's hard to show you live pictures. We thought we would show this short video about what we do. Uh, you'll see a little bit about Danny. He's featured in the film as well. And uh, after the, the video is finished, we'll come back and, uh, and I'll introduce you to Danny and Noach. So here's the film and we hope you enjoy. We're just setting it up. One second. And this is the part where I'm supposed to dance just a little bit, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
In the meantime, wow. I'll, I'll just I'll just share that I see some of the people typing in the chat from around the world. We're, we're getting a lot of um, different dog breeds that people are talking about. We've got Huskies, we've got Labs, we've got Golden Doodles, all different types of Goldens. Um, Hilda talks about her mixed retriever and Collie in Cape Town. Um, some people talk about having um, dogs that help them with various, um, you know, uh, impairments of all kinds. Well, let me uh, start. Let me just start in until the video starts running. Sure. Uh, people ask very often what breeds we use. Yep. The most popular breed is the Labrador. Uh, that is the most popular breed around the world. Almost all of the schools in the world do, do use them. We also use Goldens. And mm -hmm. our favorite dog, or Noah can talk about his favorite dog, being a first cross between a Lab and a Golden. So the Golden Lab is, uh, is his favorite. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's a male or female dog. They, they are amazing uh, animals. We mm -hmm. have done a few German Shepherds. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people who like the German Shepherd. It's a more manly looking dog, but it looks like we're about to start the film. Okay, we'll try it again. Let's see if it works this time. Still having a little technical yeah, difficulty. I think there's some technical issues. Um, if it doesn't work now, we can we can always try it again later. Okay. We'll, well, why, we'll, why don't you talk a little bit in the meantime about how you how you find the dogs, how you choose them, how you train them a little bit. The um, the we breed our own dogs. Uh, they're born, mm -hmm. bred, raised, and trained in Israel for Israelis. Um, you know, they need to live in the environment where they're going to work and. Mm -hmm. We expose them immediately to sights and sounds. And uh, um, when the puppies are born, they stay with us for the first month uh, while they're being weaned from their mother. And during that month, they, we have a puppy playground and, and puppy kindergarten. And we expose them to, to sounds and things that rock and things that sway and different materials. And our goal is to reduce their stress. We want to expose them to as many things as possible so that when they see them, when they encounter them later as working dogs, it lowers their stress. Uh, we also breed cats and we have cats that roam in and out of the, uh, the kennels so the dogs don't think a, a cat is something to be chased. But really, you know, as long as we have Noach and Danny in Israel live, I think that we should, I should introduce them now. Yep. Uh, Danny uh, lost his vision originally in the first Lebanon war. Uh, he, uh, is an amazing, amazing man. I uh, can call him my friend. Um, he, his life is, is really exceptional, and I'd like him to tell his story. And sitting next to him is that young 26-year-old who's now 60, uh, Noach Braun, who's our CEO and co-founder. And again, it was Noach's dream and Noach's vision uh, that got this organization going. So I'd like to go to Danny and ask Danny to please introduce himself and tell his story and, and tell a little bit about his relationship with his current dog, Raleigh. So Danny, can, uh, can you take it over and be sure to speak up a little bit loud? Okay, thank you, Mike. Um, I'm Danny. I'm, I was born in Jerusalem in, uh, um, in 1982, uh, in 1962, and I'm one of... 10 brothers and sisters in Jerusalem, and uh, number eight. And uh, I study in Jerusalem. In 1980, I start my service army in, uh, in Israel. Um, in 1982, I, it was um, the Lebanon, first Lebanon war uh, started. And uh, in one, uh, um, in one day, after two months, about two months, uh, we were in under a heavy bombardment, and I uh, we, I was in a fox hunt with two few friends, uh, soldiers, and we got a direct hit in the fox hall and and I lost at the moment I lost my sight, and uh, uh, I arrived to the hospital in Jerusalem. Hadassah Hospital, and 
after three months in the hospital, the doctor said they, 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 that I lost one eye completely. And the second eye, they tried to, to, to save the second eye. But after three months in the hospital, a few surgery, they told me that they do all the efforts to, to save the, the eye. But for the, for the moment, they, uh, they can do more. And, uh, uh, but maybe later they will, will try to do something. And after three months in the hospital, I start a long rehabilitation process. Uh, I, I learn how to deal with my new situation, uh, with my blindness. Uh, I learn, learn many things how to, to type a keyboard, how to, to fit and dress myself, and uh, to use a cane. But I, I, I learned many things. I felt really at home, I felt really independent. But outside, I, I, uh, I, uh, I didn't feel really independent because always someone guided me. My sister, Le uh, left all her activity and she guided me always. She took me every day, everywhere, and uh, she never left me alone. And uh, uh, I tried to use a cane, but mm, uh, it took maybe uh, uh, a few years the, uh, till I understood that to be really independent, I need something I need to change something in my life and I met few friends who lost the blind friends and I, I, I saw how they use guide dog but they told me that to, to, to get a guide dog they need uh, you need to, to travel to United States to leave the family for a month and to speak very well English and I, I didn't feel that I I, I can I can't do it at the time, so uh, 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 I I try to do many things uh, to study to to find a job, uh, but after only after three years, I decided I I, I decided or well, I felt that I I can travel to to United States to get a guide dog, and. I travel three or three, more, more than three years. I traveled to New York. I was in in Gadog, in Yorktown, in in, um, in New Jersey, uh, in Gadig Eyes, and I stayed there for a month. I left my family. I left my daughter. She was only four months. My wife, and uh, it wasn't easy for me to de to be there. You know, even if I, I decided to, to, to get a, a guide dog in the United States, my English not so very well. And uh, to stay a month without the family so far away, it really was very hard for me. Uh, but I got a guide dog, Ives, my, new, my first guide dog. And when I, when I came back to Israel, it was really after a month. It was really something different. I felt that my life changed with the new guide dog. I, I came back to Jerusalem and I remember the first day, the first time that I used bus by myself, not with my sister or some or my or one of my friends or with my wife. Uh, I, I, I walked alone, I used bus and I walked in the, in the, um, in the uh, downtown in Jerusalem in the, in the main road. And so many people was uh, in the street, and and when I walked alone, I felt really um, special feeling, like a freedom. You know, to to, to walk alone, uh, to be really independent. I I felt really what's mean to be independent, not only at home even outside, walk along with the guide dog. And even people came over me and they wanted to uh, they asked me about the dog. Uh, and uh, they wanted to actually ask me to pet the dog, even to contact the people to, uh, it was more easy for me. Uh, suddenly I couldn't, I couldn't talk to people. Uh, uh, 
and uh, but, but the dog was uh, it was more easy for people to to uh, to talk to me uh, with the guide dog and, and with the with the guide dog it was it for me it was also uh, more easy to to take uh, some decision in my life you know I, I decided to to go to the university to study uh, I felt really independent and I studied the university and after the university uh, uh, I felt that my life run uh, more easy and uh, uh, and I felt my independence really uh, like like the normal person. Uh, and after uh, uh, I, I study social worker, then I, I continue my uh, uh, in the university to do my my MA uh, study. Um, and after about twenty five years, I. Uh, uh, I was in uh, in the. Uh, I met the doctor, and the doctor asked me if uh, if um, why why I um, I'm not uh, uh, try to to do something uh, maybe uh, surgery. And I say uh, I don't I don't know if after many years I, w I can do something with with uh, with my blindness. If I want to change uh, the situation, uh, you know. Um, and I, after when I when I went at home, I, I thought about uh, uh, what the doctor told to me, uh, talked to me, and I decided maybe I will do the surgery. Uh, and uh, uh, when I decided to do the surgery, I uh, it was 25 years after my injury, and I got after the surgery. I got my sight back, and when I got my sight back, I have four kids at home, uh, and uh, uh, I could see my wife for the first time and my my children, and uh, uh, I felt really that uh, my life changed again. But it was I could see. Uh, I could see many things, you know. I could see trees, colors, the things that I really forget how how it was. Uh, all things I traveled with my son uh, to to United States. Uh, to, we traveled. To, we see. We 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 visited the the, the Niagara Falls, Washington D.C., and New York. And when I came back to Israel, I felt that something changed. That I start lost again my sight, and. I became really, um, I felt really something uh, uh, after I felt that I was so happy, uh, well excited with, with the, uh, because I, that I got my sight back, now I lost it again. And I thought, I, 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 uh, I um, I try. I go to the doctor. I ask him if they can do something. And they, the, the doctor, didn't understood what's going with the with the, the with the eye with the, my sight. But I, uh, after a few months, I lost my sight again, and it was so difficult to lost my sight again the second time, even more than the first time, uh, and. Uh, I stayed at home. I left all my activity because when I uh, got the, the first guide dog, I I, I have a many many activities. Not only studying the university, I do many uh, sports activity, and uh, uh, I didn't stay at home. I was so busy, uh, but now. I felt in a big depression after the that I uh, I lost my 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 sight again, and after a few months, maybe a year, that I stayed at home. I uh, uh, it was so so uh, difficult to to stay at home uh, and not to do something. I decided that I must change my life. I can't stay stay uh, with this situation. I called Noach, and I asked Noach. I, I tell to Noach uh, that... Uh, uh, you need some help. Yeah, that I need really a help. That 
I lost my sight again, and the dog that I had at the time, I didn't use it when I got my sight back, and he lost his ability to 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 uh, to, to be uh, to continue a, a guide dog. So I asked Noah, please Noah, I need help. I can't stay at home. I need guide dog emergency. And it took maybe two months that Noah helped me. Noah uh, uh, gave me a new guide dog. And when I got my new guide dog, after I I, uh, I lost my sight again, I felt that really I can came back to the life again. I I can I came back to to all my activity that I did before. Okay. I um, uh, I find a new job. I today I'm uh, I, I'm in the German assistant uh, uh, of a disabled uh, veteran in in uh, in Jerusalem. I help people soldier who enter in the army. Uh, I, I, I give them my, uh, my uh, uh, explain how, how, how to deal with, with the, uh, how to deal and uh, I'm doing a lot of sport activity. I'm uh, I'm grandfather today. I have my, I, I'm, I have my busy life uh, and I feel with the guide dog, I really feel that I'm independent person, feel really a normal person like everybody. That's a great story, Danny. Let's let's hear from Noach and Noach, how you uh, met Danny and, and can you tell us a little about the organization? Yes. You see, uh, as I sit here, very obedient, not like typical Israeli, letting Danny and Holly speak and communicate. And hello, everybody. I'm very proud to be part of this team. We are about 50 people here in the Israel Guide Dog Center for the Blind that changed already more than 800 people's lives. And it's a good beginning. But as I'm listening to Danny, of course, I remember Danny, you forgot to mention the name of uh, Danny's dog, uh, previous dog was Norman. And of course, I have to think about Norman, Mike's your father, and Norman and me and us, how we started it. And, uh, and together with uh, also Connie, you mentioned Connie Smokler and all these wonderful people. And I think that sitting here, the Israel Guide Dog Center for the Blind, and the way, as Mike, you, you told the story, how I met you at the first candle of Hanukkah, it's a wonderful example of a wonderful relationship between America and Israel. You couldn't ask for a better uh, example of a connection uh, between America and Israel. And first of all, I, I feel very, very lucky and proud to be part of a team here. We are about, uh, as I said, 50 people uh, that raise about 140 puppies a year. And these 140 puppies uh, go to become either breeding stock or guide dogs or dogs for special needs, families who have autistic children. And recently, for the last uh, three years, we started to raise and train dogs or soldiers who suffer from PTSD. So we, we make sure that all dogs will make a change. As we say in Hebrew, they all go to do good deeds. And before I continue and have questions, uh, I would like to say a few things. One, I'm the luckiest man on earth to have wonderful family. And I'm the luckiest man that, uh, that have legs and my vision and the, the real, uh, real heroes here are people like Danny and dogs like Holly. And we are here just connecting the two-legged and four-legged and change lives. And, and of course, I would like to, to use the opportunity to, to thank my team here and all the people all over the world, in this case in North America or in the US, that help us and help us to change people's lives. And as Mike said earlier, you should, now we have the corona, but you can connect us from a distance. Later on, when the skies and will be easier to fly in and out, please come and visit us. We are 
only 20 minutes south of Tel Aviv. And please come, make sure to come with shorts and not with ties because the dogs will lick you and jump on you and you and, and vice versa. And I'm telling you, when, when you come here, you'll understand uh, 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 when you'll be here on the ground, what an amazing organization is here. And I want to say that many, many years ago, 35 years ago, when I dreamed about it, I thought that I knew why I'm doing it. But actually the first time I understood was when I was in the school in the States, I, they gave me a dog and I was under blindfold for 90 minutes. I finished 90, an hour and a half uh, downtown Columbus, Ohio, and I, I finished the 90 minutes with an amazing dog. I then came down to the dog, uh, hugged the dog, and then took off my blindfold because I wasn't blind. I was just blindfolded. And I was so wet here and I, I was wet with tears because that was the moment I realized what guide dogs can mean to people like Danny. And we are here, as I said, we, we're changing people's lives. And uh, I'm so happy to be here. And I'm sure that in a few minutes you're going to ask questions and either Danny or me will answer to you. But uh, again, thank you for being here tonight. And we're here to answer questions. Thank you so much, Danny and Noah. That was that was really beautiful. I, I know there's probably a lot of people in our audience who are also crying um, with tears, like you did when you were blindfolded. Um, and I can only imagine, you know, how fulfilling it must feel to have this dream decades ago and really realize it. And I love how you said that it's a perfect, you know, match between Americans and Israelis. And it's such a, a wonderful story of friendship between America and Israel, which is what the America Israel friendship. League tries to share with our program. Before, before we continue, just to, to remind all of us, when when Mike spoke about the historical part that we didn't, uh, the guy that put in answer at the time, now we have uh, full members of the International Federation of Guide of Schools, and we are also the uh, full member of the IDA. So we have friends all over, and we have very good relationship with the, with the guide of schools in the U.S., and, uh, and they, we help each other. And again, it's all about relationship. It's a relationship between a school to another. It's relationship between Danny and Rolly. It's a uh, it's relationship between us and you. Um, this is an amazing organization. It's about relationship. And we all have ways to, to change and improve relationship. And I'm sure that you will continue to do so. Thank you so much. And just so you know, we have so many people commenting in the chat. First of all, how moved they are by your stories, both of you um, and Mike, um, and also people sharing that they visited the center in Israel. Um, we have Sherry, we have Alan, we have Myrna, many others saying the year that they visited and how touched and, and delighted they were with, with their visit to the center. So you have many, many fans in the audience and other people who once they're able to travel to Israel again, um, are really hopeful to come visit you. So you're going to have some more visitors soon um, <laughs> once once COVID eases up a little bit. But um, but Naomi, I know we have... Naomi, yep. I, see, I see several people are asking what happened to Norman, my father. Yeah. Uh, my father passed away last year just before Corona. He was 90. He lived a great and full life. Uh, thank you for asking. But uh, uh, he's he's helping us from above now. And I also wanted to mention one other quick thing I think that people will enjoy. Uh, if you take the word kelev, which is dog in Hebrew, and break it down, it means full of heart. So dog in Hebrew means full of heart. And these animals are full of heart. And they do change lives very, in a very profound way. So I thought that would be fun for the people who are viewing. And now go ahead with uh, with your questions. And maybe I don't know if the video can run again or or we've given up on it, but uh, if not, we'll just go to questions. Let's try it one more time. Third time's a charm. Let's see if it, let's see if the video can work this time. I see it. I don't. I don't hear the sound, but I see it. Well, that was a little closer. Okay. But 
if you want to go to questions while they're working on the film and if the film can play, that's great. But why don't you go to questions and uh, in, the mean, in the meantime, let's yeah, I think that we were having some audio issues. In the meantime, why don't you talk a little bit? We're getting a lot of questions, obviously, about how you know how you choose the dogs, what the training process is, how long the training process is. And then once they're trained, how you match, you know, which dog with which client. Uh, as we okay, said, so, so Mike, should I do it while the 140 puppies are next to me, or is that okay? <laughs> and and sure. I'm sure my English is uh, good enough for all of you to understand. It's so great. we have, as Mike said earlier, the puppies are here for two months, and more or less, and then they are given to the families. The, the families, remember, we have to find 140 volunteers to raise uh, puppies a year. We have about four, five hundred asking for these 140 puppies. So we have a long line for people who wants to donate their time to to give love and affection to these puppies. We have a team of four people that visit visit the families and puppies once a month or as needed. And then when the puppies are about 12, 13, 14 months, they come back to the center. And then um, we have a, a big room upstairs in the building and we change this room into a testing area. We need to test the dogs to make sure that the dogs are happy to become whether guide dogs or another, another uh, career, different career. And, and after we test the dogs, we decide again whether they will become for breeding, guide dogs, special needs or dogs to help soldiers with PTSD. Let's concentrate on the dogs that bec will become like Holly. So uh, we have a, an amazing team of uh, trainers and instructors. It takes about three years to become a guide dog mobility instructor. So we have a team of instructors. Each team gets about four, four five, each instructor gets about four, five, six dogs. And they have about five to six months to train the dogs. And so uh, they take this uh, dog, very naive, happy wagging tail dogs, as, as Mike said, Caleb, full of heart. And slowly, slowly we teach them the different responsibilities. And every month or two, we test the dog as he is moving ahead with the training under blindfold until we feel that they're about to, to be ready to be matched with the clients that are waiting to have a guide dog. Um, people like Danny um, use a guide dog for almost eight years. So every time the dog is about 10 years, we need to retire the dog and give uh, Danny a replacement. So when the dogs are ready, we start to call the people and we match them. We, we know the people that applied for a dog and, and of course we know the dogs and we try to match the best traits of the dogs with the people's traits. So if it if the person is tall, we need a bigger dog. If the, if the person is a very high, a, a quick walker, we need to give them a fast dog, etc., etc. So we try to make the best shiduch and uh, the, the people come here, we test them with the best dog. And then when they come over, they stay with the dog for almost uh, up to three weeks to get used to the dog. Uh, they stay here, we have an amazing hotel system. We have six bedrooms, we have dining room, we have a, a full staff. And the person, while he's here, he or she feels at home. And slowly, slowly during the three weeks, we, we teach them to walk the dogs in a very quiet area to semi busy and to the, uh, 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 to the big cities. We don't have to travel to Tel Aviv, we are near the city of Rehovot and Rishon Etzion and Yavne and Nest Ziona, only five minutes away. And every day we take them for two walks until we feel that they are together. So this is just the beginning of the relationship between the person and the dog. And then we, we, help, we help them to go back home and then we help them to readjust with the new dog wherever they live. The beauty about this service is that we give the service from Metula up north to Eilat south, and it's a free service. And the, the, the beautiful about this place is that people like Danny feel the home. They know that we are here forever. The, the, this is their home. It's not our home. It's Danny's home and all the 
and more than 200 people that are active now with guide dogs. And every as needed, if, if there's a, an issue or problem, uh, the, the instructor goes on the phone, check the problem. If there's a, a need to come and see the person, whether he's in up, Haifa, up north in Haifa or down in Be'er Sheva, the same day or the next day, the in instructor gets into the car and go and visit the person, the dog, and helps as needed. And the, the beautiful thing is that we are a non-profit organization and the, the people with blindness don't have to, uh, to pay for this service. And as I said earlier, uh, uh, they have the comfort, the, 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 they are secure, they know that we are here uh, forever. Um, Mike, I want to, to say uh, again, also from my angle that Norman for sure look at us from above. I'm actually wearing his watch. So I have Norman every day with me, Norman and Phyllis, no, uh, Mike's late parents, and all the people that uh, are not with us physically, uh, I'm sure watching us from above, knowing that we are doing the best thing on earth. And this is why people like to be part of this place. Several people, I see in the chat, several people are asking what happens to the retired dogs. Uh, just so you know, the retired dogs, uh, it is... It would be Danny's decision what happens to Raleigh when he's ready to retire. Uh, very often they, they do keep them, but sometimes they go to other family members or even the original puppy raisers. So just so you know, none of our dogs have ever gone to a shelter. These are amazing dogs. They, they are incredible uh, dogs for the house. So you never have to worry about our dogs not being loved and, and cared for. Uh, another very frequent question is, what are the differences between a guide dog and a pet? You know, what makes a guide dog so unique, so unusual? And really, there's three things. Uh, the most important is a thing called intelligent disobedience. And I want you to think about that for just a second. When you have a dog and you ask your dog to obey a command, you expect it to obey immediately. But here, we have to train the dogs to make a decision about when to disobey the command. Now, why would you do that? Well, when Danny gets to an intersection and he's listening for the traffic going in front of him so he knows he has a red light, but then he hears it going this way and he knows he has a green light, he says to Raleigh, Kadima, go forward. Raleigh has to make a decision. Is it safe for us to go? So Raleigh gets to use his intelligence to decide to obey the command or not. That is the highest level of guide dog training. Uh, the other things we need to teach are um, uh, to allow space for Danny, Danny's width and Danny's height. So the dog knows how much space Danny needs to avoid an obstacle. And the dog is looking for overhead branches and signposts and things like that to avoid an obstacle. And the last thing is that we train the dogs to solve problems. In Israel, there are security barriers everywhere. So the person with vision problems knows where they want to go. They know they want to go into that building over there, but they don't know how to get in the front door. And they say, find the door in Hebrew. The dogs work around the security barriers to get them to the door. So the dogs have to solve problems. So I thought, you know, those three things are the highest level. Uh, what makes a guide dog unique and, and unlike your pet at home? So turn it to Naomi again. No, that's, that's really uh, helpful. And, and, and yes, Naomi, no. Naomi, yep. uh, just quick uh, to connect to what Mike said. Earlier on, I'm sure people saw the pictures of Danny sitting on the bench with the two dogs, with late Norman, the four-legged Norman, and Rolly. So, so Danny is in a very good example of a, dog, of a person that never gave the other dog until he passes away. And... Uh, yeah, and, and by the way, Nomi and, and Mike, you see all the names there, and, and I see so many no, no names that I know over the years, and I see the, uh, the, the Brookler family that hosted me in New York until before I met Norman and Phyllis and the family, and here it is. Here, uh, Danny, is a picture with you on the bench in Jerusalem, and they are showing the picture of you and Norman and Rolly. <laughs> and I think this is the point that I want again, Danny, to connect us to what what a guy, what what a dog what role is for you, what is the Israel guide dog center for the, for the blind as well, but especially maybe again. Uh, uh. Uh, Rolly for me, because Rolly from Israel, there there 
a little difference between uh, uh, my first guide dog uh, that I got in, in New York. Uh, when I left my family for a month, when I was, uh, when I need to know uh, my English notes so very well, I didn't understood all what, what they explained out. And when I came back to Israel, to Jerusalem, I, I felt really alone. I feel, I feel that I lost everything. I, I didn't find someone to explain me, to give me, I didn't feel safe as enough to work with a with a guy that with Ives when I came back to Jerusalem, and for me my angel is Noah because uh, later I when I met Noah and Noah told me you know uh, my project is to open a, a guide center in Israel, I felt that really something very special would be happen in Israel because I think that I couldn't uh, do. Again, uh, left the family, go again to to uh, to United States to to get a new guide dog after many nine or ten years, and because I, when I met Noah, I knew that all my life when I will need to change the guide dog, I will, always I will find a, a new guide dog here in Israel, and uh, for me, really, it's something special that that I I, I can travel for visit United States, but not to stay uh, in a special school uh, without the family, no with the family, no with my wife or some, uh, it would be not, uh, it more easy to do it in Israel. And uh, and I feel really independent, really uh, normal like everybody, because always I have my guide dog here in Israel. Thank you, Danny, for giving the compliments to me, but I'm not an angel. Uh, and the real, the, the, the real angels are the dogs like Rolly, and of course the my team, and you all, the supporters, and people who volunteer here, and they are the real angels. We, we are just, we just connected the two dots together. Uh, yeah, I, I, are, were Norman and Rolly the same breed of dog? We're getting questions about yeah. what, kind of, what kind of breeds are the best fit for, for this purpose. Well, when people, when, when people ask me what's the best breed, my answer, Nomi, and all the, all the viewers are a good dog. <laughs> but of course, but as, as Mike said earlier, guide dog uh, industry, guide dog schools all over the world uh, usually use uh, Labrador Retriever, Golden Retriever, cross between the, ter- the two, a little bit of German Shepherds and other breeds. But the industry, uh, the community of guide dogs all over the world, based on this lovely engine, and, and Labradors come u- usually as black Labradors or yellow Labradors or chocolate la- Labradors. But uh, we, you know, we, we, and sometimes people ask me uh, color or, or whether male or female, there's no difference. We, we love dogs. So the dogs are, and uh, whether it's a male or a female or yellow or white and, and, or, or chocolate, it's, it's, it's what inside the dog. And again, we need to make sure that the dog is happy to do. We, we're not forcing a dog to become a guide dog. Remember, we need to think about the welfare of the dog. And we all have to remember a guide dog walks maybe an hour a day, two hours. Most of the time, as you could see the body language and the relationship between Danny and, and Rolly now. Of course, usually Rolly is not allowed on the furniture, but tonight, today we need it. To have a good angle for you to see her, so she's a, it's it's one of the happiest day for her that she's allowed in the couch. But they usually she, she has her own bed. But the but the best relationship between a, a, a person and a dog is guide dog team or any service uh, dogs. I wanted to mention I wanted to mention quickly. Somebody asked, you know, does the dog ever get to play? And the answer is yes. The dog is only working when when Danny is outside going from one place to another and the harness is on. When he gets to the office, when he gets to work, when he gets home, the harness comes off and the dog is a dog. And the dog plays and runs and has fun and is, interacts with other people. But to put the harness on, the dog focuses, it's time to go to work. Uh, another quick thing I wanna mention, I know we're coming up to the end. Um, For those who have children and grandchildren who are bar mitzvah age, we have many children select us as their mitzvah projects. You can contact us in in the United States, go to our website and and connect with us. 
But uh, this is a wonderful way to connect kids to the project in Israel. We love to have visitors, um, but we are a working guide dog school. So if you want to come visit, you must make arrangements in advance. But we'd love to have you. We want you to come and see us. Uh, so I wanted to make sure those plugs got in there before we ran out of time. Naomi, did you have other questions? Of course. No, and, and we're getting questions too, is whether you're hiring. Because some people want to come work for you. <laughs> We, we, let's talk about anybody who's interested. We'll give us a call offline. Uh, we're always looking for good people, but the you know with Corona and everything else that's going on, things are a little tight. But uh, speak to us offline. We'll be happy to to connect you with uh, the center in Israel. Thank you. And, and somebody else asked about the dogs. No dogs are born here. They're all in Israel, except for a couple of dogs that we get from other guide dog schools to help with our breeding program and bring in new blood. But no, we do not train here in America. So there's a question also if there's other centers that help, um, you know, training dogs for the deaf or for people with other disabilities as well in Israel. Or is it just for blind? Um, we, we are strictly for blind. And we also now do dogs for soldiers with PTSD. That's an amazing, amazing program. Um, and we have kids, you know, emotional support dogs for the children with autism because we don't want any of our dogs to go to waste. If we can use them, we want them to help someone. We do not train for the other areas yet, uh, deafness or, or uh, other disabilities. We are the only accredited guide dog school in the entire Middle East. So if, okay. it, it is a, we are an oasis and uh, this is the place to come. It's beautiful. And I, I know we're all being distracted by all these beautiful photos of the dogs. Um, another question, which I think um, I know the answer, but the service is free to all clients. They don't it's pay a penny. It's, it's free to the clients. It's not free to us. Uh, the cost <laughs> to, to raise and train a guide dog is probably a little more than 40000 each. Uh, that may seem like a lot, but if you look at schools here in America, most of the cost here is around 150000 each. Uh, it's because we are very aggressive in maintaining our costs. Uh, it's a very labor intensive area. So that's why the cost is so high. But uh, uh, that is the, the cost to, to have a dog. And remember, when you place a dog with a client, it's not a one time gift. This is a gift that keeps giving every day, 24 seven for eight years. So it's not just one time and, and money's gone, it's constant. And we continue to, to back up and support our clients for the life of their partnership. So they never have to worry, uh, you know, about the, the maintenance of the dog. Mm -hmm. Another question for Danny from the audience is whether the dog um, sort of knows what it needs to do for Danny versus how to interact with the rest of the family and, and others who may not need the assistance. Um, so, you know, what, what does a dog do for Danny um, differently from what it does from the rest of the family? If you doubt it, I've done. Uh, at home, Rolly is a dog like all the dog at home. You know, everybody can play the dog. Yeah, they can feed her. They can take it, take her outside to play in the garden. But she know when we are outside. Uh, when I put the harness uh, on her, she know that she working now. And you know, few weeks ago. Uh, we, uh, I, tra I traveled with my family to, uh, for the weekend and I left the dog at home with my friend. And uh, uh, he took the dog outside, he played with, with Rolly, but when I came back, uh, I took Rolly and I gave him a... a, 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 a I gave him, I, I had an appointment with, the, with a friend. I met him in the street, and when he saw us, he called her. He called. Uh, we worked, Rolly and me, and he called Rolly, 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 and Rolly didn't move. She she worked, and he said, "Why she was with? She stayed with me a few days, and now she don't want. To, she didn't look at me." I said, "Because now she she know that she's working, and she is uh, only must be uh, 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 on focus to only working and not to play with the uh, anyone." So, no, just from my angle, is that the dog knows, understand exactly the difference between 
members of the family. And as Danny goes next to the door, pick up the harness, she knows, ah, okay, now I have to go and do my part. But, but in the same time, she lives in a family. So of course, all members of the family loves her and she's part of the family. Mm. And uh, I know that uh, we are about to finish. I must say again, many, many thanks to all of you. And, uh, and I really wish you there and us here uh, better, better times with COVID and uh, for health, uh, you know, each of us to be in the best medical health. And of course, I hope that we, we will be able to come and visit you over, over there in the U.S. and for you to come over to, to Israel uh, in the near future. Yeah, we, w- we will try the video one more time. We're not giving up on the video. Um, again, there's a lot of people asking in the chat. Um, it's nonstop questions. We can't, I'm sorry that we can't answer all of them, but we will share this video to anyone who requests it. Afterwards, just send an email to webinar at AIFL.org. I still have the pictures of us coming back home in 1990 with two dogs, our first born son. I never dreamt by then, the 30 years later, that will be a strong organization that have given new life and independence to almost 700 people and their families around them. I wanted independence. I was a cane user before, and it was exhausting, very exhausting. I was two years in the army uh, when uh, the first Lebanon war started. Two months in the war, I was injured in a near to Beirut airport. I lost my sight. I served for five years in the Nahal Brigade. All those experiences continue to impact my life after I finished my army service to a point where the uh, quality of life that I had was not that high. <laughs> 25 years after uh, uh, I lost my sight, uh, I got my sight back after a surgery. It was for a few months. After the high feeling, getting my sight back, I lost it again. And it was very difficult for me, uh, very hard for me. I stayed at home. I left all my activity. I called Noach and I said, Noach, Listen to me, I need a guide dog emerging. My therapist uh, asked me if I wanted to be part of a pilot program. I said, what kind of pilot program? Then she said, you would get a dog in this pilot program. I said, oh, okay, yes, I signed me up for that. Ruby is an angel that is uh, three and a half years old. She is trained to help me with uh, PTSD. We wanted to do more. We wanted to give out trained dogs, not only guide dogs, but now service dogs. Since she joined my life, I almost don't have any nightmares. Later, I got a new guide dog. It was Norman. Norman, my fourth guide dog. And Norman helped me or pushed me to coming back to the, to the real, real life. Uh, to see the effect uh, the dogs have on the people and how they rehabilitate them and bring them back to society. That's very, very uh, rewarding. Her name is Honey. Very sweet. (laughs) She gives me a sense of routine, especially when processing the whole situation with the pandemic. She is responsible for at least 50% of me smiling, which is a lot. How you cannot smile, you know? It really allows you to think about, you know, taking care of another life and not just focusing on your own problems or your own situation. The guide dog gave me the opportunity to be independent, like everybody. Awesome, I'm glad it, I'm glad it worked that time. <laughs> Danny, <laughs> Danny, you're the star of that video. Do you, do you want to share any final comments with, with our many viewers around the world? Are you asking Danny or me or us? Each one of you, if, if you have a, a one 30 second seum. Uh, I can say again that uh, really the, the, the guide dog give us the opportunity to be independent, to be in the life like everybody. 
My, my 30 seconds is that I'm only 60. I'm going to be here also with my cane when I'm 95. And I'm the happiest man uh, choosing this uh, job for life and waiting to see you all. And thank you for organizing this uh, event. Our pleasure. Thank you. And Mike. Oh, just, just we are so thankful for the ability that we have to help others. And we invite everybody to join us in, in helping. And thank you for viewing today. And if you have questions, you'll see in the chat some email addresses. Uh, please feel free to reach out. And uh, there will be a recording of this video that we can share. So, uh, you know, if you reach out to me or the, the folks at American Israel, we'll be happy to forward that on to you so you can share it. Thank you again for inviting us to the program today. Thank you. Same English, shalom. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And shalom to Roli. I hope Roli enjoyed the program as well. We loved, we loved having, this is our first program with pets. And I think we may have to do some more because people love dogs. And as we wrote in the um, email announcement, August 26th is International Dog Day. Um, so for all of you out there with dogs or who aspire to have a dog, please celebrate with us in a couple weeks. And um, they truly are man's best friend, as we can see from this incredible program. So thank you again to Mike, to Noah, to Danny, to Roly. It was wonderful having you. Um, as always, we host these webinars every Wednesday and Sunday at noon Eastern um, with our friends from uh, America and Israel and our viewers from around the world. This coming Wednesday, we will be virtually visiting the Menachem Begin Heritage Center um, with um, both Herzl Makov and Paul Gross, who are part of the center and who will tell the untold story of Israel's sixth prime minister, Menachem Begin, um, from um, throughout his life, uh, the revolutionary pre-state, the public figure, and of course, the beloved prime minister and man of the people of Israel. So we look forward to having you on Wednesday again. Anyone who wants a recording of this video, please email us at webinar at AIFL.org and visit the center's website. Um, and thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We loved having you. Have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you. We'd be, we'll be thrilled to come back sometime. For sure. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.